Hello world and welcome back to Evergreen Secrets. It has been a little bit of time since our last video. Um, life kind of got away from me for a while there so I'm hoping to get back to it with a big project which is why I'm starting this video today. Um, I've been thinking a lot about the runes which I tend to do and how difficult it is to really get into them. So um, they're really hard to study. They're you know, they're, they're not like tarot cards. There's not just a really pretty picture that you can look at to try and get a story out of. It's just, just some symbols. And so one of the things that, um, that I usually wind up doing about every year is kind of getting this reboot of energy right around solstice time. Um, the summertime is always a little bit more of a creative time for me. And so I was able to, I've, I've been able to get some projects done over the summer, but this year I wanted to do things a little bit differently. So one of the things that I found is each time I try and go through the runes, I pick up a book, I try to start from the beginning and I try and read through the whole thing and then I get stuck about halfway through and it gets a little bit overwhelming trying to, you know, there are only 24 runes of the Elder Futhark and they're actually really difficult to try and get through them all. And so usually about halfway through the second eight, I get stuck. And so what I've been thinking about is how can I, how can I change that? And so now that the summer solstice is, is over, Mercury is finally out of retrograde, Mars is finally out of retrograde, thank the gods. Um, Mars hit me really hard this time, it was really odd. Um, Mars isn't usually a ruling planet for me, so it was a little bit of an interesting experience. But um, so basically what I came up with is maybe doing things a little bit out of order. And so anyone who has kind of studied the runes finds that really it gets pretty heavy. There's a lot of stuff to cover. There are a lot of different materials that you can go through to try and figure out what runes mean what. And, and it really is a personal experience. It's something that you have to go through yourself. And, um, and I've tried doing that in different ways. And I usually start with Fehu and try and go through um, in a very linear fashion. And I've found that that doesn't really work for me. And so, um, so I think we're gonna change things up this time. Instead of having a, um, you know, starting from the beginning and walk through, we're gonna start really randomly and so it'll be a little bit interesting. So um, I've got my big library of rune lore here. Um, I'll walk you through each of these a little bit later. Uh, I've got my runes, I've got a tarot deck that actually uses runes as part of it, um, and then I'll also be doing meditations and uh, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos as I can find them, and, uh, and hopefully putting all that information together in a way that makes sense for everyone. So, um, at least for myself, because this is something, you know, even after using them for, oh, almost 20 years now, I still feel like um, we're just starting that relationship. So, um, so I hope that you can come with me on the journey, and, uh, and then at the end of the video, I will pick one of these runes, and that'll be the one that we start with. So rather than, uh, rather than starting from the beginning, I'm going to do it completely randomly. If you think about like tarot, for example, it's really easy to start with the fool and go through in a progression because they are really numbered. There is the concept of the fool's journey, but that concept does not actually apply to runes. If you think about the way that the runes are structured, they're just something that you put in a bag. There's no order that you put them in to put them away. They're always a little bit more chaotic. And so rather than start from the beginning, I'm just going to pick one at random. And so we'll see how that goes. It'll be a little bit interesting. I'm sure as we get further in the randomness, you know, we'll start seeing repeats, but I won't do repeat videos. We'll just pick until we find one that's new. And, um, and we'll see how that goes. And hopefully with a little bit more of the random element, we'll be able to go in a little bit more, um, more in depth and actually get to that last eight, which has been completely just a void for me. It's been it's been opaque and so I really need to clear that up and I'm hoping that doing things out of order will help from that. 
So, um, so I think at this point, what we'll do is I'll, uh, I'll transition over and I'll show you my library. I haven't read all of these, unfortunately, but I'm hoping to get through more of them as we go throughout this journey. So, and um, in this way, you can kind of take a look at what's out there. This is obviously not a complete collection of everything there is to know, but I've got a reasonable collection of books and um, a lot of them are pretty common and I'll give you my opinions on them. So we'll get moved over to, to that. Okay, so here is a walkthrough of my rune library. Um, these are in no particular order, but we'll, uh, we'll just kind of take them as it goes. So the first one, and the smallest, is the Little Giant Encyclopedia of Runes by Serona Knight. You can see that this is actually, for as small as this is, it's pretty thick. There's actually a lot of really good information here. Um, they actually go through each of the eights in uh, in particular. They actually associate each of each of the runes with an astrology symbol, with um, with a god, and uh, and they also associate it with a time of the year and a time of the day, which I thought was really interesting. And so um, and so this is actually a really good little reference book. It doesn't go too deep into the history or anything like that, but it does go through and it, and it shows you like a song that you can sing. And a lot of this has been um, pulled from, from other texts that I have as well. So this one felt a little bit more like it was a repeat for me than some of the other books that I've had. But, um, but once you start getting into runes and you start reading the books over and over again, you start hearing the same themes, which you should, because otherwise then they're not actually going to be consistent meanings for everyone. So this has been a handy little uh, little reference guide. It's not one that I would consider to be like a, a starter, but it's a really good one if you're wanting to go um, on a trip or something like that and you can only bring one little thing. This is a handy little book here. The next one is a book called The Runes by Horrocks Svensson. And this one actually came with my very first set of runes. This came with um, with a set that I purchased at a bookstore, and um, and it goes through and it has each of the uh, each of the poems that go with each of the runes, and then it has a, a description of each of them at a pretty basic level. The um, these actually came with my first rune set. Actually, did come uh, from Ralph Bloom, and so they it does include the infamous. 25th rune of, uh, of weird here and um, and so it, it never really quite sat with me some of the correspondences are a little bit off to me so um, so this one was was a good starter but it um, I, I haven't really really resonated with the meanings in this one The next book is A Practical Guide to the Runes by Lisa Peschel. This is another pretty small book. You'll see it's it's just a little bit short here. It's about 130 pages or so. But this one is actually, for being such a small book, it is packed with a lot of information. If you are just starting out with the runes and you would like a reference guide to be like your one and only, but you don't want to get too far into the deep the deep, deep knowledge, and you don't want to you don't want to get lost in it, and you don't want it to become your doctorate degree, for example. Um, this is actually a really useful useful reference guide, and I found that most of the information in here resonates with me, and uh, and it's been very useful. It has a lot of uh, different spreads in the back that you can use. Um, there are some missing spreads that I consider to be basic rune spreads, but but it's here, and it's uh, and it's it's pretty well complete, and I feel like the meanings are. Um, are really useful. It also has a whole section for using um, runes with magic and so it, it actually has all these correspondences for how to use each of the runes in different types of magic which I think is really useful because uh, I think that using runes in magic is probably one of the least used but most powerful ways to use the runes. So, um, so this has been a really handy little book. It's a quick little read and um, but it's very useful especially if you're just getting started. Now, no rune collection would be complete without at least one book by Edred Thorson. Um, this is the Rune Caster's Handbook. This is probably the number one. This was my first book from him that I got, and it's um, and it has all the different things that you need to know about 
how to use the runes. So it goes all the way back into history and it shows um, all the different theory, goes through each of the runes and, and what their meanings are when they're, um, when they're up, right side up and when they're upside down, all the different keywords and everything like that. It was really interesting because I got this book well after I'd been pretty deep into the runes and so I feel like a lot of the information here um, for me it was a lot of repeats, but um, but one of the things that it does really well is it goes through and tells you exactly how to carve your own. So if um, if you really do get into runes, I do recommend that you create your own runes. And I know I've promised in the past a um, a video for that. I it will be coming, but um, but it actually goes through how to do that. It also gives some ideas for how to create a casting cloth. So there's like a, a different definition of the heavens, each of the different worlds, and you can go through and actually it shows how to use a casting cloth with that casting technique that I've shown before. So, um, so this is really useful. If, you're, uh, if divination is your bag, then this is definitely a very useful uh, book to have. Anything with uh, Edred Thorson is gonna be a good a good thing to have in your in your back pocket. Some of his stuff gets a little heady. He's a little full of himself sometimes, but uh, but the information there is good. Now this one, this next one is my Bible, Taking Up the Runes by Diana Paxson. I have read through this book several times. Um, it's just packed full of information. Very heady, very thick so much history, so much information. She cross-references each of the different runes um, using, you know, going back to different uh, different people who have had their own interpretations. She shows three different uh, translations of the of the rune poem. She just has a lot of information about uh, about each rune and she does a couple a couple things with this that I think are really interesting. One is she points out what the different people believe about the rune. But then she has a whole section in the back about different rituals that you can use for uh, for each of the runes. So um, these are things that you could do by yourself. There are songs you can sing, chants. Um, you can do these with a um, with a coven if you have one. And, and it really, um, it gives you a different way to use them. And so I found that this was very useful uh, very useful way to use it, and so I've I love this book. If uh, if you are ready for, for for Runes 201, this is the book for you. It's uh, it's actually very approachable in the way that she writes, so it's very useful to um, to kind of go through and um, and go through all that information. She really did her homework on this one, and it really shows. And she's able to to express her information in a way that's very approachable. Or some of the other stuff, um, like Ed, with Edred's work, his stuff is, tends to be a little bit more intellectual. This stuff is something that's a little bit more approachable for, for the rest of us. The next one is called The Rune Workbook, and this is by Leon D. Wilde. And this one I really like because it actually goes through, and it is a workbook. So he goes through the history, just like just about every book does, and uh, and goes through the meanings and the sounds and everything. But, uh, but he also has different uh, exercises that you can do. And so if you're just getting started and you're wanting to really get familiar with it, then, uh, then this actually gives you some practical things to do to really connect to that rune and, and to its meaning, which I find really useful. Um, runes, if you just know the meanings, are, are nice, but until you actually really grok them, if you really get it, then, um, then they can really become really powerful for you. So that's why I really like this one, is it, it is really a workbook and you're able to go through and, uh, and, and work with each of the runes in turn. So it's a little bit of a of a read here, but it's it's not terribly big, but um, but it it is very useful in all the information that it has. All right, now we're getting into the ones that I haven't read completely. This one is Freya Aswin's Northern Mysteries and Magic, and this one is really interesting because uh, this is probably one of the few authors that actually takes runes from a female perspective, which. Um, 
you know, obviously I definitely resonate with that. And um, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'm only about halfway through, but um, she's, she's a little bit of an odd duck. She's got a, a bit of an interesting past and she goes into that as she goes through and uh, through the introduction to describe kind of how she came to the runes and, and, and how she really connected with them. And so, um, but actually going through, she has a really different ways of approaching them and she has different meanings for them, which are really interesting. And then also in the back, she has uh, a bunch of different profiles of the gods and she has a whole chapter just on feminine mysteries. And I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm hoping to, to pretty soon because this is something that um, that's been really interesting for me but uh, but I think it's really interesting to take it from that feminine angle that uh, that not everybody does so it's a pretty useful book there um, this one's a little bit more on the intellectual side it's a little bit more on the uh, you know you you have to be in in uh, college study mode to really to really get this one but um, but I found it to be really interesting the next one is another Edred Thorson book. This is the Futhark, a handbook of rune magic. And this is another one that I've read through a couple times. And basically this is taking runes not from a divinatory standpoint, but from an actual knowledge, from an actual mu magical standpoint. So he goes through and really talks about um, the different branches. And of course he goes through each of the different names, but then also how to uh, how to create workings, how to to do the galder, which is kind of the singing of the runes. And uh, and so this is a really interesting one because it gives you, again, kind of that practical what to actually do with the rune rather than just, oh, okay, this one means cattle. Well, what does that mean? And so this actually gives a little bit more information there. Um, he goes into how to make create talismans, how to create um, different... Uh, uh, wind runes and things like that. So it really goes in and uh, and tells you exactly how to create those. And so this has been one that's pretty interesting. I haven't read the whole thing yet, but uh, but you can actually go through and um, and do some practical magic with it. So it's another kind of shorter one, but um, but this one I think has been really interesting. The next one is Kedrick Olson's Runes for Transformation, Using Ancient Symbols to Change Your Life. And this is one that I keep hearing being described as, um, as Rune 201 or maybe even Runes 301. And, uh, and basically it's, it's actually taking that self-help approach, the self-development approach to, um, to actually using the runes to make your life better. And I thought that was a really interesting angle. I have not gotten very far in it, as you can see by my bookmark here. But um, but just the different angle and the way that he approaches them as a as a self development tool, I think, is really interesting. He approaches each of the runes from an outer work and an inner work perspective, and uh, and so that really is a is a really interesting thing. If you are interested in shadow work then this is probably the book for you because he actually goes through each of the runes and its associations with outer work and with inner work and they really are different ways to approach them and so um, so this is actually a really useful thing and he also has kind of the workbook model where you can actually fill in what you think the associations are when you're thinking about that rune in reference to yourself and so this really kind of gets you deeper into those meanings and uh, and really creates that personal connection which I think is really interesting I'm gonna be using this quite a bit in this new project and um, so we'll see we'll see what to, what kind of magic we can make from that and then the last one is Rune Lore. This is The Magic, History, and the Hidden Codes of the Runes, again by Edred Thorson. This one I have not read yet, so I don't have, um, I don't have an idea of exactly of how that, uh, how it's laid out or, uh, or how correct the history is here. Um, I know that Edred is fairly respected in the rune, in, in the rune industry, so, um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is just kind of a history, kind of how these things are, are being applied and uh, and things like that. It's more about about the the history and how people other, how other people have used it, not necessarily how you should use it. So um, so this is just kind of a uh, of an interesting history there. So that is 
my room library. So uh, at this point, I'm just about out of battery, so I better get going here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick the rune that we'll start with. So let's take a look here. And we picked, oh, very interesting, Degas. And so this will be a very interesting start to our rune journey. Degas means day. If I, if I remember correctly, it's been a while. So um, so we'll go through and basically what I'll be doing is, is uh, until the next video is, is recorded, I'll be going through the books, uh, referencing the rune, doing, um, I'll be checking out some videos and blogs and uh, different references. I'll definitely link all of those references in each of the videos and uh, and we'll see what we can come up with because it apparently is a brand new day to study some runes. So I hope you join this with me. Um, leave a comment if you're interested and uh, and subscribe to the channel to get the updates and we'll see you next time.